Hello, and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone. Once more, we are back in this second cycle here on Europa, and today we will be exploring a rather green cavern. Hopefully, you do not get caught up in it. So please, sit back, relax, and let us begin. Among my travels in these depths, there is very little I am unwilling to try to reason out, even the extra-dimensional parasite Jove. But there is one creature that bothers me more than most of the others, and arguably, it isn't even an animal, it's a plant. On this second iteration of Europa, the caves have become far more dangerous than simply housing nests or the lone spiling. They've become infested with a variety of different life forms, and one of them is a human mimic. This plant skeleton, as it's called by the local miners, has a sizable presence within the European Ridge, particularly its caves. I have not witnessed this creature elsewhere, possibly due to harsh conditions like the colder temperatures closer to the surface, or the more desolate conditions through the Ophotic Plateau and hydrothermal wastes. Often unseen, the plant skeleton hides among the masses of plant matter hidden deep inside caves, concealing even the diving suits that they appropriate. And once a unfortunate diver is within striking distance, they burst out and perhaps in some form of retaliation to attack the perceived interloper for harvesting their poor brethren. The container of the plant skeleton is a common run-of-the-mill infested diving suit with a broken mask and other apparatuses covered in a copious amount of plant-like matter collected inside and on the exterior of the suit. The plant matter in question are small colonies of writhing fibrous materials that are somehow capable of extensive cooperation, mimicking the movement of a human in many cases even better than that of the husk. Once removed from the diving suit, the creature plant, or however one wishes to refer to this life form, becomes an odd amalgam of dense plant matter that has been adapted into the form of a humanoid to better operate the suits they hijack. Though, once the plant matter has been removed, it isn't quite what you would expect, as beneath the plant-like flesh is a human skeleton, or at least one I am sure was human at one point or another. Though the teeth of most specimens I have come across seem oddly sharp to belong to that of a human, whether this is a result of the plant somehow sharpening already existing teeth, or perhaps a more artificial origin being made by the plants, though I do not. No. The plant flesh in of itself is strange. Upon initial removal from the larger colony, it still shows signs of writhing and independent movement. Though once it's been dissected or thrown into a generalized deconstructor like many of my crew tend to do, it ceases all movement and function outside of only leftover metabolic processes. And it is at this stage when it perhaps gets the weirdest despite how boring it might seem, as at this point I have a hard time differentiating between the writhing plant flesh and other European plant specimens once it's in this state, as there are simply no chemical properties or specialized organic agents that seem to encourage its movement. It's almost as if there was nothing controlled controlling the overall larger plant specimen, at least not that we can identify, behavior of the skeleton. As stated before, the plant skeleton seems to be some form of ambush predator, lurching out at unaware prospectors and divers, but yet they aren't truly a threat. While surprising, there is little a plant skeleton can do against guarded or well-armed divers other than flail around and take advantage of a bad situation, which I guess would make them more ambush scavengers than anything else. I presume that the sole interest of the plant skeleton is the bones and diamonds diving suit of the humans in question, as in the case of the death of a nearby human, the plant skeleton will do nothing in relation to the newly made corpse, which could play a part in perhaps a type of environmental symbiosis, where if a plant skeleton manages to successfully hunt a diver, the corpse will get hung up along the water system of the cave, and over time will decay, leaving only the broken 
suit and partially intact skeleton, which this is what I think the plant skeleton is really after. Not some form of nutrition or predation, but instead a opportunistic colony in which spores or some small creature with a flagellate type movement would begin to acquire this new colony, either growing new plant flesh within it to move it back to the colony proper, or perhaps leaving some form of chemical trace behind so it can be retrieved and taken back. Though more than likely, I think that the plant skeleton is largely a sessile creature taking advantage of broken diving suits as protective shells for its robust inner ecosystem, and perhaps only becomes nomadic, so to speak, when they detect a diving suit is nearby, and then proceed to clumsily swim over to it in a cave system, and then pile onto it, sticking themselves and the new shell against the wall to form a new sessile colony. If this turns out to be true, I can only imagine a rather awful way that some of these unfortunate prospectors or divers could possibly go. Being grabbed by what appear to be a group of diving undead, and then stuck to a wall with your last possible hours spent gasping for air as you stare into the broken mask, writhing with the unknown beneath it. Irregardless of possible behavior, I still do not know what compels these masses of plant flesh. Honestly, right now, there are two possible explanations. One, these skeletons are controlled by some extra-dimensional parasite, much like Jove, but by far weaker, and use these herbage homunculi as a form of conduit much like Jove did with the ancients, and funnels energy from our dimension back to whatever icy hell they exist in, though this is completely ludicrous and far outside my realm of knowledge. Two, and the more likely as of now. And while lacking any real evidence of this, I believe it's highly possible we are dealing with a spin-off of the husk parasite, though one that has foregone the hijacking of living organisms and exists in a niche similar to the thalamus, making use of the shells of dead creatures as a defense mechanism, though to a more minor extent and only in caves. Though there is little evidence for this, as well as a lack of any genetic presence of the husk within in the plant matter. In another vein, it is entirely possible that this might be a thalamus offshoot as well, but I digress mostly due to the overwhelming nature of the husk parasite on this version of Europa. Though, regardless of any possibilities, at the end of the day, the plant skeleton is a true anomaly, perhaps one that I can figure out in time, and more chance evidence becomes available, and I urge any prospective prospector or daunting divers out there to be well armed and go as a group into any European cave. Whatever riches you may seek isn't worth a possible orgy with a pile of plants. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. I plan to keep a more regular upkeep in terms of an uploading schedule, but we'll have to see how well I can stick with that. I plan to extensively cover more things from Barrow Traumatic a lot more consistently. So with that said, please have a great rest of your day, week, or night, and have a pleasant one.